Hello everyone, my name is Vic of EUS Market Biz and in this video I am going to share with you the, some of the frequently asked questions about initiative view so especially uh, behind initiative queue and queues versus crypto okay so let's begin so before I start um, I just want to say what uh, or describe or read again what is initiative queue so initiative queue is building the payment system of the future so the queue payment network will integrate the best technological improvements that have been made in the payment industry over the last few decades to create a flexible, easy to use, and inexpensive payment network. These technologies have been available for years, but have not been adopted due to a classic chicken and egg barrier. No buyer wants to join a new network with no sellers, and no seller will offer a payment option that no buyer uses. Initiative Q solves the adoption problem by associating the payment network with a new global currency and distributing this currency to early adopters for free so that is what is initiative queue so let's go to behind initiative queue so in my previous videos i um, this um, read about joining initiative queue sign up and verification obtaining queues and the queue payment network they're frequently asked questions so if you want to view that you can search um, view that in my YouTube channel, alright, so start. So behind Initiative Q. So who is behind Initiative Q? So Initiative Q is founded by Sa'ar Will, an entrepreneur or a seller entrepreneur who started his first payment startup at 1997. I mean in 1997 and later founded Fraud Sciences, which redefined the payment security space and was acquired by PayPal in 2008. The Initiative Q team comprises top experts in payment systems, macroeconomics, and internet technologies. The idea behind Initiative Q is the first is to first create a, a critical mass of users, which can then be harnessed to create the world's best payment network. Therefore, currently our primary focus is to get millions of Q members registered, after which we will recruit the world's top professionals in the space. Who is the monetary committee? A global currency should not be controlled by one private company. Therefore, an independent monetary committee will be appointed by a voting by all members and stakeholders in the Q payment network. The committee will only issue new coins for the purpose of maintaining stability and increasing adoption. Similar to how the world's largest cryptocurrencies are managed, the alternative, having a fixed supply of queues like Bitcoin or a similarly simplistic monetary policy, will not work in the real world. Stability of purchasing power is crucial to success, and it can only happen through intelligent analysis of economic activity and customer behavior. So who are the queue agents? So Initiative Q will focus on the technology, standards and regulations of the payment system. While delegating the financial operation to hundreds of local agents, these local agents will not will be responsible for customers for customer service safeguarding members' funds, connecting local stores, legal compliance, and settling with other agents. Agents compete with each other to manage member accounts, buyers or sellers, and receive a small fee for transactions they process. Together they enable the Q payment network to be a fully, I mean a truly global system with local branches providing individualized supports and access. So how many queues are there and who holds them? So there are 2 trillion queues will be issued to be distributed as follows. So 80% are expected to be distributed as incentives to encourage user activity and promote network growth. Around half of the incentives are reserved for buyers and the rest for sellers, agents and contributors and then to incentivize growth supporting activities within the queue network. 
10% are assigned to the Initiative Q payment company for the purpose of funding development of the world's most advanced payment network. 10% are assigned to the Q Monetary Committee Monetary Reserves. This will be gradually converted to other cryptocurrencies and financial assets, allowing any Q member to easily convert to other currencies if needed. Monetary committee members will be compensated according to industry standards. Once the two, the initial two trillion Q are fully distributed, the monetary committee may create and distribute new Qs in order to keep the money supply in line with economic activity and to maintain stability as outlined in the economic model. Now that this concept is out, what prevents a hundred new initiative Q-like networks from popping up? For a new payment network to succeed, it must reach wide-scale adoption. Buyers should see many sellers supporting this payment option and sellers should see many buyers requesting it. If the market fragments into many networks, this is much less likely to happen and everyone loses. The competing networks, the buyers, and the sellers, it is therefore a high priority for Initiative Q to deter copycats, at least during the initial growth phase. And this includes number one, the exclusivity incentives. Initiative Q will provide incentives for sellers to commit to using the Q payment network exclusively. Legal, so core components of the Initiative Q model are patent pending. Trade secrets, Initiative Q has several tools to accelerate growth, which will be rolled, which will be rolled out in the future to keep the competitive advantage. These will be exposed only when necessary. Rapid growth, most importantly, the faster the Q payment network grows, the harder it will be for a newcomer to catch up. Here you can help get more of your friends on board and increase both your rewards and the likelihood of the Q payment network success. To be clear, while a unified network is required for success, competition is important to drive progress and innovation. The Q payment network is therefore designed as an open network of independent operators who compete on connecting buyers and sellers to the network. Okay, so that is behind Initiative Q. So the next one is Qs versus crypto. So how is this different from Bitcoin and cryptocurrency? So cryptocurrency is a brilliant solution to a problem that doesn't exist. Cryptocurrency is digital money that is hard to counterfeit. While the mathematical foundation is genius, ingenious, an immutable money ledger is far from being a majority need today. Our money is already digital in the form of bank computer records. No one is worried that these records will suddenly disappear. This is due to a robust system of trust and governance that protects individuals from such risks. While many dislike this complex system, it works reasonably well, and there is still no better alternative. In fact, the anti-counterfeiting measures that cryptocurrency offer create an array of much worse problems. Okay, so transferring security risk to the currency owners. Removing banks from the system also removes the protection that banks provide in security, fraud prevention and dispute resolution, leaving individuals vulnerable to theft, scams and human errors. To protect themselves, cryptocurrency users are expected to undertake complicated security procedures such as generating cryptographic keys using dice entering them into an unused laptop that is later destroyed, storing the keys using special hardware from multiple manufacturers, and keeping paper backups, backups in bank safes. Comparing that to credit cards which allow consumers to make payments using just a few encrypted numbers while being fully protected from losses, underlines how far cryptocurrency are from becoming the currency of the future. Okay. Unstable value, so basic requirement for a cryptocurrency or a currency is stability and predictability, predictability in purchasing power. This requires a carefully managed monetary policy that matches the money supply to current economic activity. Cryptocurrencies have either no monetary policy or no really simplistic one. As a result, their value fluctuates rapidly, rendering them unhelpful for purchases and trade with all activity driven instead of speculation. So legal controls. Whether we like it or not, governments still hold legit ultimate power 
and they insist on regulating currency transfers, financial transactions, investments, and their underlying mechanisms. Any currency that attempts to circumvent such regulations, including most cryptocurrencies, will face an uphill battle to wide-scale adoption. So reversibility. No matter how good a system is, if humans are involved, there will be mistakes and misunderstandings. Allowing transactions to be reversed benefits both users and sellers in the long term. As customers can engage in the market more confidently, of course, reversing a transaction should be allowed only for certain reasons. Some, something that can only be determined by human beings following procedures. This goes against the decentralized nature of cryptocurrencies, making wide-scale adoption difficult. Waste. So Bitcoin's energy consumption is equivalent to that of 6 million households and emits 90, 90 million kilograms of carbon dioxide or 200 million pounds every day. Worse, all that is spent to spend just two transactions per second. A far cry from the thousands of transactions per second on the credit card network. So Initiative Q's main goal is to achieve global adoption and Initiative Q therefore prioritizes ease of use, stability, security, efficiency, and legality over abstract goals like decentralization. This is a real-world solution for real-world problems. It is based on a network of Q agents who employ thousands of people, conform to local regulations, and ensure that members receive quality customer service and are fully protected from thefts and scams without requiring them to become security experts. However, some of the concepts behind cryptocurrency are valuable and may be deployed in Initiative Q's back-end for settlement between Q agents where these disadvantages become negligible. So is this an ICO? So no, ICO, initial coin offering, is a term used in the cryptocurrency world to describe the public sale of newly issued coins. Initiative Q's goal is to become the standard in payments and to create a global currency that requires adoption by hundreds of millions of members, which will not happen if they are required to pay. Q's will therefore be distributed for free. So how is this different from an airdrop? So airdrop is a term used in the cryptocurrency world to describe free distribution of coins, while Initiative Q will distribute free currency that is buying by itself is not enough to revolutionize payments, it can only succeed in synergy with two other actions, requiring members to undertake simple tasks to qualify for the rewards. These are tasks that promote wide-scale adoption of Q for the benefit of all members and the reasoning behind these tasks above. Development of state-of-the-art payment system the eventual success of Q is based on it being the safest, easiest, and cheapest way to trade. The free distribution of coins is on only interesting in so much as it promotes the adoption of advanced payment technologies. Additionally, Initiative Q is not a cryptocurrency which allows you to avoid the many shortcomings of cryptocurrencies. Okay, so those are the frequently asked questions for Q versus crypto. So as you can see the difference. Okay, so guys, um, if you want to um, register using my invitation link, go to, um, I mean, read my description below because it's there. Okay, so those are the frequently asked questions, right? So guys, uh, before I go, I just want to say that I am not a financial advisor and everything I say here is not a recommendation for it to buy and sell. And... You must always do your own research before deciding for yourself, right? So this has been Vic. Uh, thank you. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.